In this video, we will be covering the topic of focalization. What is focalization? Well, the simplest way to put it would be the perspective, or point of view, through which a narrative is presented. More importantly, focalization puts a big emphasis on the amount of information that is presented in the narrative. Take a simple example. There's a man sitting at a table drinking tea, teacup in hand. He's thinking about how good the tea tastes, and how heavy the cup is. We'll follow this example in the future. Firstly, the agents at work. The focalizer is the agent that sees. In our example, the focalizer is the man at the table, as the narrative is projected through him. Keep in mind that this does not mean our story is narrated in first person. The focalized, or the agent that is being seen, in our example is a bit different. An easy way to think of this is in terms of sentences. The subject is the focalizer and the object is the focalized. If our sentence was, the man thought the tea was delicious, the focalized would be the tea. However, if we were to focus on, the man thought the teacup was heavy, then the focalized would be the teacup. The focalized can be anything that is being, seen, through the focalizer. Next, we move on to the three types of focalization, zero, external, and internal. Zero focalization is where the narrator knows more than the character that is being focalized. In our example, the narrator knows that the liquid in his cup isn't tea at all, but in fact alcohol, and that he is drunk. This is expressed to the audience, and is great for comedic purposes. Dramatic irony falls under this category. External focalization is when the narrator knows less than the character. In our example, our narrator does not know what the man is thinking. What the narrator would project to the audience might be the fact that the man is nodding his head as he drinks, or that he shifts his arm uncomfortably whilst holding the teacup. This leaves the interpretation of the story to the audience. Finally, internal focalization is when the narrator knows what the character knows. This is often paired with first-person narration, for obvious reasons. In our example, the narrator is the man, and the audience is told what he is thinking from his perspective. Now that we know what focalization is, we can move on to some recommendations for how to utilize it in your writing. The most important recommendation would be to have a plan. Do you want to write in first person? Internal focalization is the way to go. Do you want your reader to interpret your writing on their own, or do you want them to be immersed fully in the story, projecting onto your character? In the end, the choice is yours. The second tip, coming off of the first one, is to know your audience. A younger audience would enjoy being spoon-fed information, so external focalization wouldn't be a great option. Zero focalization would be great for a comedy-themed story, while internal focalization would work perfectly for an action-packed story that lets the audience follow along, immersed completely. Some frequently asked questions. Is the focalizer a character, the narrator, or can it be both? Sometimes, it can be difficult to figure out the difference between the focalizer and the narrator. This is especially true for internal focalization, where they have the same information. For other cases, however, a great tip is to figure out the perspective of the story. The narrator, remember, is always the one delivering the words that the audience reads. The focalizer is the one whose perspective is projected through the narrator. Is the focalizer always a character? Not at all. The focalizer can be anything, especially in abstract contexts. It could be a rock, or a tree, or in our example the story might be told from the teacup's perspective instead. Thus, the teacup would be the focalizer. Thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something from this video. See you next time.